All right, free body diagram problem example. All right, check it out. We've been doing these kind of problems, I'd say, the last year or two. And uh, since they're kind of new, we're, you know, we as teachers are trying to find a way to help you show your work properly. Because I know in, in the past with our simpler calculations, it's list givens, formula, plug it in, answer. Now we've got like one, two, three, four, sometimes five or six formulas in one problem, and it's, it's really difficult to do that. So we're trying to think of a way to compensate to make these problems understandable, but also give you a nice systematic approach to showing your work. So uh, let's go over this problem. I'm going to put this problem in the description. You'll see it on the video, okay, so you know what we're working with. And I think this might be helpful so you can see an example of the format you know, that I'm looking for on these problems. And I think it'll help you organize down the road. Now, when you go to physics down the road, AP physics down the road, if you get to AP physics, you know, you're going to be using calculus and trick, okay? You're, but this is still a really good start. It's a good foundation. And I'm going to keep saying, read the problem carefully, write down what you have, okay? Start with what you have and draw a picture. Draw a, it's always great to draw a picture in physics. Think in real world what is going on. We talked about in class where if you think about, well, what is it doing? If you see it's accelerating right. You have this, like, what is it actually doing? If you can visualize and draw and summarize what it's doing, the calculation becomes a lot easier because then you solve it correctly. So let, let's, let's see what we have to do and put the puzzle together. It's like a puzzle. So it says a 2.5 kilogram object, so we know kilograms is the unit per mass. So we're going to write down 2.5 kilograms. It's accelerating 4 meters per second rightward, so positive acceleration rightward. Put that there rightward. Pulled horizontally, so it looks like we're going to analyze the x forces and the, the forces in the x direction. Looks like y forces could be balanced. On a table with an applied force of 20 newtons. So we need to determine the force of friction, and we also need to determine mu, the coefficient of friction. I'm sure we're going to have to determine more in order to get that. So Here's what you're given. Let's draw a picture. So in the first box, we say let's list what we have and draw a picture. So the picture we have here is this. We have a mass of 2.5 kilograms. Okay, I'll we'll come back to that in a minute. We see an applied force to the right of 20 newtons. We have positive acceleration. Positive acceleration. Oh, you know what's right, we'll leave that. So, the key thing is here, I see we have 2.5 kilograms. Does that matter? So you should be thinking, I have an applied force, I need to find the opposing force in the x direction. What are my y forces? So how do I figure that out? You know, we see we have a mass. So the first thing you do is draw your first box up here. Let me see if this shows up up there. Hold on, let me make sure we're good. Let me bring that up a bit. Okay, so now we've got, let me zoom in slightly. Okay, so now I have mass. So if I have mass, I can then get the weight, which is the force of gravity. So label this box as puzzle piece, w, the W equals mg box. And in that box, we have the mass, and we know the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared overall. So you got W equals 2.5 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. I know you can do it in your head, but it's good to show the work systematically. You've got your weight is 25 newtons. Okay? So your force of gravity is 25 newtons. So we know that the y forces in this case are balanced. So if they're balanced, right? We know that the sum of the y forces are balanced. We also know the normal force, which is going to be important. As you can see here, assuming you know your formulas, what you do, you're going to know that the normal force is 25 newtons upward simultaneously. So the weight of the force of gravity is 25 newtons, and because of that, the normal force is 25 newtons. So we can add that puzzle piece over here. So we had four newton, uh, normal force is 25, force of gravity is 25. Our y forces balanced. Okay, so the line force is balanced. Okay, so now that we have that, where can we go next? 
we can go, we have the force spread, we have normal force. We can find, we need to figure out mu and we got to figure out friction. But the problem is, right, in order to get the coefficient of friction, I need the force of friction. So we're kind of stuck for a second, but we have to think, what do we need to get in the x direction? We need to now go for, can't go for friction yet, we got to go for the neck force, because now I've got the object has mass, and I've got acceleration. And you need to think to yourself, it's going rightward, and the, same, the acceleration is in the same direction as its velocity. It's going right, accelerating right. So the object must be speeding up in the positive direction. See, this is where you have to understand this. So this force of friction is going to be less than this. That's going to be important. So now let's get the net force in the, one, in the x direction. F net equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. Net force is mass, 2.5 kilograms, times acceleration, 84 meters per second squared. Pop that in, the net force in the x direction is 10 newtons. So the net force is going to be 10 newtons. So now we got 10 newtons. So the question is this, now is where you need to think, and this is where you need to understand. We know our song, acceleration, unbalanced, speed up, slow down, change direction, every time inertia, inertia is mass. So we see we've got rightward acceleration. There's an applied force rightward. There's some friction this way, so because the table's the object sliding on the surface, okay, friction opposes it. So I have a net force of 10. So think to yourself, what's the friction going to be? So let's take a look at this formula. So to get the Frictional force, we need to take, look up here, you ready? We've got net force is 10, we got applied force is 20. So if I've got to find the sum of the x forces, you know it's EFX, sum of the x forces equals the rightward force minus left. Let's see if that's showing up on the video here. Hold on. Oh, good. Okay. So now I've got the rightward force of 20 newtons, and I've got the net force of 10 newtons. So solving this and using a common sense, if it's speeding up in the right direction, we know the frictional force is going to be less, and we know the frictional force when we solve for this, you're going to get 10 newtons leftward. So now by looking at this, 10 newtons leftward is going to be the force of friction, which is the leftward force. Okay? So now we see with the free body, y forces are balanced, x forces are unbalanced, hence an acceleration in the x direction. Okay? The applied force is greater than the frictional force. How do I get the frictional force? We have the applied force, right? We subtract net force, which is 10, gives us 10. Okay? So right now we've got that, and now we are ready to find mu. And I'm going to do it right down here because we're running out of room. So what's the coefficient, in this case, of kinetic friction in this problem? So now we're going to use our next formula you should already know. Okay? We need to know that the force of friction equals mu times the normal force. Okay? In this case, we're talking about the kinetic friction. Mu, uh, kinetic coefficient and kinetic friction. So now to solve for mu, we divide on both sides by normal force, as you guys already know. Okay? So if we plug it in, the force of friction is going to be 10 newtons over the normal force of 25 newtons equals mu. And when you take 10 divided by 25, looks like we are getting 0.4 equals mu. So 0.4 is mu, and we know the units cancel out. So again, all we started off in this problem was with mass, acceleration, and applied force. Those three pieces of information, look how much it can unlock. But the key thing we notice is you need to understand. You need to go back to forces cause acceleration. There's inertia at play here, mass. So if you know mass, you figure out the weight. If you know the forces are balanced in the y direction, you know the balance, the force of gravity is going to equal the normal force, the upward force that supported the table. 
then you know the accelerations in the x direction. You may add 20 this way. We know there's acceleration here. We knew we're accelerating rightward. So the unbalanced force is going to go rightward in the same direction as the applied force. So we know the net force is going to be right minus left. So, but we didn't know. But we knew that we could find net force first, mass times acceleration. We had a net force of 10. Okay? So our forward applied force is 20, our net force is 10. We knew we're speeding up in the right direction. So we can infer and calculate that 10 newtons left is our force of friction. This is amazing how you all can do this, and this is how you should be thinking. And many of you do this. That's the scary part. That's really good. And then given that information, then we're able to unlock the idea of the coefficient of kinetic friction down here. Okay? So again, always start, list what you're given, draw a picture. Think, but here's the thing. All these great strategies do not mean a thing if you don't understand the basic premise of forces causing acceleration. And the idea of balanced versus unbalanced forces. If you don't know those Newton's laws and you don't understand the concept of inertia, this is never going to make sense. And that requires hard work. This is like icing on a cupcake. And it's kind of fun. A lot of you are having fun with this because you're, like, you're, you're amazed that given what you've learned, you're able to formulate a calculation. You're able to use different multiple calculations to come up with multiple answers to solve a problem. It's pretty neat. Now when you get AP physics, I'm sure this will be easy compared to that. Much easier. But again, we're trying to teach you the mentality of read a problem carefully, write down what you have, draw it out, and make the connection to solve the problem. Okay? Make the connection to solve the problem. Okay? And uh, that makes it a lot easier. Alright, so there you go. Hopefully that helped you. It's an idea of the work. WMG, MA, some of the X forces we knew Y was balanced. Coefficient of friction, simple as that. So each box is like a puzzle piece. Put them together, get the final result. Okay? All right, there you go. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully I didn't go more than seven minutes. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I went ten. Okay, that's it.